Hey everyone, Phil Pendlebury here and welcome back to the Steinberg Nuendo channel. I hope you are having a super mega large day. Good to have you with us. Thanks ever so much, of course, for your comments and suggestions from the last video and the ones before that. In the last one, if you didn't see it, what we're doing is we're looking at some of the free tools that are included with Nuendo 13, exclusive to Nuendo, not included in Cubase. And in the last one, we looked at Doppler, randomizer and the post filter and in this one we're going to look more at the voice or dialogue orientated tools and a couple of little extras at the end don't forget as i always say to please leave us some comments suggestions content that you'd like to see or anything you'd like me to change please do let me know right so let's just move into it straight away okay headphones on for me so that i can hear what's going on and I'm going to show you this little project. It's a kind of dialogue based voice show reel that I did a while ago and all the voices are me. So I had to rely on a lot of tools because my voice acting is not the best. I'll just give you a couple of clips from this. So we had um, right at the beginning, we had a basic introduction, which was just me talking. Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. There's a news reader. Prime Minister of Smegville. Mr. Didibinini Bibisa has warned all his loyal subjects that they should never under any- There's a Hollywood announcer. Where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents. If you indicate, I will cut you off. Scottish, obligatory Scottish man. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've got to spoil it all. Okay, um, let's skip forward to one of the more interesting parts. Kill them all. Yes, sir. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Will, you weapons! That's really wonderful to hear! So, let's have a quick listen to the Dark Lord voice. Kill them all! All except the gardener! He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Let's disable any of the treatment on that. We'll bring up the mixer so that you can see what we've got here. So there's our Dark Lord. Kill them all! All except the gardener. And basically what we've got on there is the voice designer. We've also got a send to a Roomworks. So let's have a quick look at how that voice was done. So I'm going to disable the send and I'm going to disable voice designer. Kill them all. All except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. So yes, that's me just doing a voice like that, which sounds ridiculous. But as you heard, once you treat it a little bit, um, we can make it sound quite convincing. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. And with the voice designer on. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me. All right, so first of all, Let's just bring that up and see exactly what we did. At the moment, we've got that voice detuned. You can see there's a detune option there. Kill them all, all except the gardener. So that's pretty much, if we control click there, we can set that to zero. He is very important to me and I like his beard. Um, we've also got a formant control so we can, if we, if we put the pitch to zero once again. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is so formant, as you know, will kind of give you the impression that the pitch is being lowered. It's like the tonal character, um, or, or indeed increased. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. The spatial effect basically does what it says on the tin. Uh, but in this case, uh, we're in mono. We're listening to this in mono, so it's not going to have any effect. Quick look at robot. Basically, it fixes the pitch. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like... 
and whisper we can kind of add a, a gruffness there you know it, I think it takes like the distortion from the sound and amplifies that let's have a listen to delay and feedback because this is quite handy especially if you're looking at sci-fi kind of things kill them all all except the gardener he is very angry and i like his beard kill them all all except the gardener he is very important to me and i like his beard very um useful for kind of sci-fi effects and don't forget that all those controls can be automated uh, as you saw me fiddling about with them there kill them all all except the guy going into a black hole or whatever so let's look at this uh, morph control now th this is a really clever little thing which is often overlooked and what it enables you to do um, the, the input signal is basically processed using characteristics of a sidechain signal. So we can put another sound into this, or we can use the integrated sound generator. And the mode allows you to switch between um, the two morphing modes, A or B. And the transition allows you to morph the input signal into the sidechain or generate a signal and the slider sets the morphing amount so the parameter is only available in A so that transition there so let's see if we can set that up so let's just have a look at using the internal sound generator to start off with he is very important to me we'll get, rid of, like his beard. get rid of all the other things kill them all all except the gardener he is very important to me so let's choose a square wave here. Kill them all. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Kill them all. So if you can hear, look, that's the sound that's being generated. noise let's leave it there and once again we'll play the voice all all except the gardener he is very beard So I think you get the idea of that. Now, what would be interesting would be to try and run a sound of some kind through that uh, using the sidechain. So another little tool that is really useful if you don't want the full overblown interface, and yeah, it is complicated, the voice driver, but like I said, have an experiment. Uh, if you want something a lot simpler than that, then just have a look at pitch driver. So I'll quickly show you that now. We'll use the same voice, so there's my voice. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me. And there's Pitch Driver. So basically it does a detune and it does a little bit of stereo spreading. So let's just have a quick listen. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important. Oh, not going to do anything and because like we're in mono. Beard. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like it. So obviously with the mix, we've got the original voice and the affected voice, so let's leave it 100%. And you can see that does a decent job. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me. So yeah, that's, that's pitch driver. I mean, basic pitch control and some spatial stuff if you really need it. Okay, let's move on. So here we're going to look at supervision. And this is another tool that's included in Nuendo 13 and in Cubase, but there are some parts of this that do not feature in Cubase. So have a quick look at Supervision. Supervision does loads of things. It's metering, it's loudness monitoring. There's a whole bunch of modules, as you can see, 
phase, spectral, waveform, lots of things. But what we're going to do here is quickly just look at the intelligibility meter. So all we need to do really is just mention that the Netflix loudness monitor here is only in Uendo 13. It doesn't uh, come in Cubase. And I know there's lots of people doing Netflix stuff now. Um, so you might find that useful. So let's have a look at this intelligibility meter. So let's just play our Dark Lord voice and see what the intelligibility meter makes of it. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. So as you can see, a little bit of a struggle there. Now that might be acceptable in this particular case because it's kind of a sci-fi voice. Um, but just out of interest, let's enable that uh, voice designer. So there's the voice designer. Let's uh, turn off that side chain. We don't need it now. And we'll just do some stuff with the voice designer while we're looking at supervision at the same time. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. Kill them all, all except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. Kill them all, all except the Ghana. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. So as you can see, it gives you a good idea of how easy to understand the voice is. So let's have a listen to one of my voices, which is just me speaking. Um, OK, thanks, Jeremy. Here's Studio 6. I'm not actually sure what's going on here today. So as you can see, I managed to stay around the 10 or 11 mark. Ideally, you want to be in that green area. OK, so one more little thing to look at before we wrap up this video. So this is Headphones Match, and this is included exclusively in Uendo 13. It doesn't exist in Cubase, and it does a job that you would have to pay for if you were using any other DAWs. So very, very useful. I'm going to quickly show you how it works. For those of you not familiar with this kind of tool, basically what we're trying to do is get a flat EQ uh, in your particular headphone. So I've got some music here. Now, this is a tricky one to demo because obviously the idea here is, all right, so I've got my Bayer uh, DT880s on here. And, you know, uh, when I bought these, for example, the, the top end is very, very, very bright, very high, very bright, very sizzly, a bit too much for me. And there's a school of thought that says, well, you can get used to the sound of your headphones, which is very true. But in some cases, they might need, you know, a little bit of a tweaking. So tools like this will try and equal things out a little bit. So you could switch from maybe these headphones to a different model and you'll still get a similar sound. And it all has to do with curves and adjustments to those curves. So with headphones match, it's really simple. And what we do is we choose our model. Now, this is why I was saying it's a difficult one to demo, because even if you're wearing headphones right now, which maybe you are, uh, they're not necessarily going to be the same model as mine. And this is another one of the issues with the other headphone matching tools that you find certain ones that I'm not going to mention don't have a very big collection of headphones. Headphones match has a huge collection, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much. Let's just say, for example, for me, what I would do is I'd go down to Bayer Dynamic. And as you can see, what you get there is a curve that shows what's needed to bring these headphones towards being flat. So. If we look at the controls here, that's the original curve there. You can see that there's that really high peak area uh, around about 6K. Hopefully you can see that. We don't need to see it, I'll leave it on. Uh, we'll get to the target in a minute. And then here we've got the limit. So if we turn that off, you can see that that top end comes in where the top end drops off on my headphones. So we'll leave that on as well. And let's have a quick listen. Like I said, you're not really going to be able to hear 
any benefit of this because you're not wearing the same headphones as me. So for me, somewhere around that 60% mark is doing a decent job. You might want to increase it. But as you can see, what we're getting is a pretty much a mirror image of the curve of the actual headphones. We're getting a mirror image of that to try and bring the whole signal back to flat. So finally, let's have a look at the target section in the middle. We'll put that back to 100% just so that you can calibration. So really, we've got a few options here. I like the Harman curve, and you can see that it increases the bass and lowers that top end a little bit. And then, of course, the other control here is the simulation. And in the simulation, we have a set of headphones basically the same as what your headphones are. So, OK, I know a lot of people like to listen with Apple AirPods. So we find the Apple section and let's say AirPods, whatever. And that will now tell us. <music> roughly or probably quite accurately how that would sound if you were wearing those particular headphones, even though I am wearing the DT-880s. Okay, uh, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks ever so much indeed for joining us. And of course, thanks for your comments and suggestions uh, from the last video. Very important to me to get suggestions for new content because there's a lot of different things we could be doing. We're coming up with ideas as well, of course, but if there's certain things that you want, it'd be good to know what they are. Uh, for example, um, somebody's asked for Dolby Atmos. Now, I've done a few things on Dolby Atmos in the past, but yeah, that's definitely, definitely, uh, your way, definitely on the list. Um, so yeah, comments, suggestions, like and subscribe and all that. And please join me on the Steinberg Nuendo channel next month for another two-part series. And I'll see you then. Cheers, super mega large.